everybody today we are going to start a bugsy quilt for a little girl i've got a little baby girl coming so we need to do a little baby quilt i am going to do 12 blocks i'm going to do three across and four down normally with quilts you do them with opposite numbers not equal numbers or unequal numbers it uh, makes the quilt run better i'm going to use the bugsy bunny designs SDS 1136 plus I'm going to use other designs for the in the hoop weeklies um, that we that Darlene had out last year I will give you the numbers later on but the first square I'm going to do is going to be the this one which will be the top right hand side then there will be a, another one which we'll add the number in a minute then we're going to do this one on the far left hand side, on the top left hand side. Again, this will be another block, I'll give you the number. Then this one in the middle, I've taken the uh, words that came in Bugsy Bunny Quilt and I've moved them around to, to suit myself. Such a big miracle in such a little girl and I've put the sweet dreams down the bottom and a little butterfly in the corner. I've done that with my software. Then there'll be this quilt block, the number will be. Moving on, we'll have this one here, which will be our <coughs> third block down with a design in it. Then we'll have this one, and the block number of this one will be. Then another Bugsy Bunny block, which is this one. This block number will be. In the bottom centre of the quilt, I will have this Bugsy Bunny design number. And then this block will be our last bottom one. Now, if you've probably noticed, girls, I have changed the colours on the uh, block to one colour because I want to do pink on the top and I'm going to put the purple on the bottom. And I'm going to put the purple colour, which will match this, in my bobbin so that I'm going to sew this part of the design first instead of second. And I'm going to do this last just in one colour and slip the purple underneath. So this will also be on the reverse side of the quilt, not the actual bunnies. We'll get to that, you'll see it. Now, I am using for my stabiliser it's called Iron on Pellon at Spotlight in Australia. I don't know what it's called overseas, but this is actually what it's called. It's called Vileen H640. I'm not sure if you can see that. My wonderful husband might be able to zoom that in a little bit. And this is what, what, uh, what it's called, V-I-L-E-N-E. -E, Vileen. So it's Iron on Vileen probably, in, but we call it... Um, iron on pallon. So I've cut my pallon <clears throat> which I will hoop in my hoop and I am using a 200 by 200 hoop. That's the size of the design I purchased and I will hoop the pallon. I will not iron it on to the fabric. I will hoop the pallon and then I will float the fabric over the top of my hoop. Um, the pallon iron-on part I will put up, so if I'm to hoop it for you, I would hoop it like this, just getting it into the middle, so that's the middle of the hoop, that's the middle of the hoop, put this one down, middle of the hoop, middle of the hoop, look right there. And then I will just float the fabric over the top to sew. What does that mean? To float the fabric over the top, I'm just going to be laying the fabric once I put the hoop on the machine. And I'll show you when we get to the machine. But we'll just find the halfway marks and we'll just pop that over the top like that. And then we'll start sewing 
and the, the, the fabric is not hooped so you don't get the burn marks and it's just what they call floated over the top. Now, once I get to the stage of adding the purple on the bottom, once the design has been sewn in here and we're ready to do this last lot of stitches, I will then take my hoop up, which you will see later, and I will pop the bottom fabric underneath like this. I'll pin it and then continue stitching, which will be the, the, um, the border uh, pattern. But girls, don't panic and boys, don't panic. I will get to that as we go. I'm just showing you what I intend to do. Um, now, just one more thing before we go. You make sure that you've cut your 12 squares and I've cut the pink 300 by 300. And because I'm going to float the bottom and I want to be able to pin it so that it doesn't move while I'm doing the last one, I've cut the, the purple 320 by 320. The pallon is the same, I've cut it 320 by 320. Once I have my 12 blocks stitched, and I'm not going to stitch them so you can sew, I'm going to actually do this video so you can see how I'm going to join uh, the, the actual quilt together with the 3 by 4. So I'm actually going to do this video to show you how to join these squares together. So this is not about how do I stitch it, because it's very, very simple. You just print out the picture, um, uh, print out your design. It will give you the colours that Darlene has used. I'll choose my own colours, possibly very close to these. And then I'll just stitch them as per the, the printout. Um, except for the, the first colour, which I've put on, I've moved it to last. Or if you don't have software to move it to last, girls, just skip colour one and go straight on to the colours in the in the rabbits and then go back to colour one and then stitch the first one. All right, I think now um, I'm going to sew some blocks and then I'll start showing you how to join the blocks together. Um, just one more thing before we go. The border I am going to do is I've bought this beautiful fabric from Spotlight. It's got little bunnies on it and because I have the bunnies, uh, the Bugsy design, I'm going to actually use the border um, in this which has got the, the lilac and the pink in it. So it'll have a border just around the outsides in this. If anybody wants to know what this fabric is called, it is called, I can't read upside down, Bows and Arrows. Uh, design collection and the number is 9314935856566 so that's bows and arrows and that will be the border for the uh, entire quilt we are ready to start our first block i've written down the colors as per the instructions and i have slightly changed them to suit my cottons so the first one it says white which i have on the machine already to go first color the second color was the rose smoke i've changed it to this then the illusion blue then the petal pink then the orchid pink and a repeat of the petal pink so i've left a gap here so that i know one of these colors will go there then the next color would be the green for the green leaf and then again will be white and again i've left a blank spot for the white and then my dark color um, is midnight which I've changed to the dark burgundy and the lilac which I again have changed to the burgundy so what I've done is I've left a gap for the white to go in and I will just go from uh, stitch number seven straight through to stitch number eight I'll just keep stitching I have I will change the bobbin to the same color so that underneath when I put the uh, block underneath the purple underneath uh, it will stitch this colour underneath, which is what I want. So girls, we're ready to start sewing. So we've got block one all ready to go. We've got it um, in, in situ and away we go. You don't need to watch it stitch, girls. I'm sure you'll know exactly how your own machines work. We'll be back. Everyone, as you can see, when I said I'm just going to float my pink over the top, I've just laid it straight over the batting. The little bubble or the iron-on is down. I've just floated the fabric over and the machine is just stitching uh, the, the design straight onto it. It is not caught in any way. I've just laid it over the top, floated the fabric over the top of the batting pellon uh, uh, stabiliser. So everyone, as a consequence of me not 505 spraying the fabric onto 
uh, where I floated it, um, I have started to get puckers, as you can see, and they're fairly bad. So this is the fabric I was given, and it's not 100% gotten. It's got a lot of stretch in it. I didn't realise until I started sewing. So these puckers now are pretty bad. So what I've done is I've stopped the machine, and I've actually pinned the fabric still floated over the top of the pallon which I've hooped, which is a stabiliser. I'm going to try that and see if that alleviates that. Uh, with the next blocks, what I'll do is I'll spray this and I will still float it. I won't hoop the fabric, but I will spray it with the, with the uh, 505 spray or some adhesive spray to try and alleviate this puckering i didn't realize this fabric wasn't 100 cotton it's got a lot of stretch in it so i've who i've pinned it all the way around and let's see if that alleviates some of the problems if it looks too bad well we can always uh, ditch this one and start again right, right everyone we're at our last set of stitches which is the lilac on my colour, but I've decided to put this colour on. Before I stitch this last row of stitches, I've stopped the machine, taken the hoop off. I'm going to put the same colour bobbin as the top colour on the machine now. Taken the hoop off, I've now come over and I'm going to put the fabric I want, which is the purple, underneath. So when my last set of stitches sew, it will also start sew on the bottom. I've just uh, put the fabric in quarters and moved it over a smudge and so when I fold this down, I can still clip this onto my machine. So I'll go ahead now and I'll pin this securely to my top fabric, sandwiching in the, um, uh, the fabric in the, the stabilizer in the hoop and the fabric on the bottom. So when I Pin them all together, it makes a nice little sandwich. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that now, making sure they are firm, and then we will put the hoop back onto the machine and sew the last set of stitches. When I come over to the side over here, you will see that these this fabric will not is going to be in the way when it goes back onto the machine, and I'll show you what I mean. This is the part that clips back into the machine. This is the edge of the hoop. So I'm just going to fold this fabric down a little bit so it's not going to be in the way of where it's caught on the machine. So I'm just going to pin it at the back here. It's actually pinned so it's on top of my hoop. Okay, so I'm still pinning it onto the top fabric and the, and the uh, stabilizer but I'm pinning it back so it's not going to get caught uh, in, my, um, in my stitching or interfere with where it is on the machine. All right. I'll be back in a minute when I finished uh, securing this with pins and uh, I'll put it back on the machine and sew the last roll. So I'm out, about to do the last set of stitches. I have sandwiched the uh, top through the stabilizer and the bottom. So the bottom is now securely pinned onto the uh, stabilizer and the front cotton. I folded this down so it doesn't interfere with where it hooks onto the machine. I'm going to put it back onto the machine and continue stitching. All right, we'll see you after I've done all the blocks. And we can then go ahead and uh, put the quilt together. So here is our first block, girls. And me pinning it has alleviated any other uh, puckering. So that worked out very well. So that's the front. And that is the back. I'm not sure if that's too dark, but we're going to go with that. Now, I did have a bit of trouble with the cotton breaking here. So... Um, just ignore these little bits. I'll probably redo this block before I put it on the quilt, but I'm just showing you these so you can, if you're wanting to follow on, go ahead and do it. So what we do with the next block, which will be the plain stitching only, it won't have any design in the center. It will be this one here. And this is SDS1126 underscore um, underscore quilt two. So that'll be the next block that I'll do and I'll show you how I set that block up 
and then you can continue on and do the rest of the blocks if you want to follow along or if you just want to watch the video that would be awesome as well and boys so as you can see we'd sandwich that between the hoop now if you're wondering why i used the iron-on pellon for the uh stabilizer it was because that's what i had on hand so i wasn't i wasn't going to go out and buy any more it was what i had on hand and i thought i'd show show everyone that you can use whatever you've got on hand you don't necessarily need to go out and buy uh something else so this is this is why i'm doing this this is finding my four spots which is my halfway points Putting that underneath. Four points, four points, four points. And that there then is fairly well in the hoop, squared. Oops. and tight. Tighten it up. Fairly well squared. This is the bottom piece. So the right side is going to go down and the wrong side is going to be up. This will go under the hoop. Again I have my four points. So that's dead square and then I'm going to move it slightly over this way because I want to fold the bottom underneath so it don't, doesn't catch on where it clips into the sewing machine. My pink right side up. Get my four points again. And I have marks, I think most uh, embroidery machines these days have marks on your hoop where your, your um, centre points are, the centre for the bottom and the centre for the top. And that's fairly good. I'm just going to float that there. And then I will pin the top, the bottom and the stabiliser together. You won't need to watch me do this, girls. And then I'll just pop that in the sewing machine and stitch that. I will put more pins in it than... That doesn't look right, but that will fix that in a minute. And of course, when I come to this side, I'm just going to fold this back onto the edge of the hoop. Just to keep it here. All right, girls, once I've pinned this, I'm just going to pop it back into the machine to sew. So uh, I'll be back when all my uh, sewing is done. And we will continue the video on how to join all the squares together. Now, everyone, there is that block completely finished sewing now. That's the front or the top. And that's the bottom. Now I'm going to continue on, so the rest of the uh, 12 blocks and then we'll come back in part two and show you uh, how to get ready and start stitching them together. We'll see you soon. Bye.